for joining us today. Today we'll be talking up today we'll be talking about how God is in your life. First thing is, do you guys read the Bible and stuff? And the second thing is, if you read the Bible, trust in the Lord, the Lord will always be there for you. Don't forget it. And you guys have a wonderful day, and thanks for joining us. And come to the men's group this Saturday, and come to church this Sunday. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us today. This is episode 10, and we're going to be talking about how to read the Bible. Now listen, if you're on YouTube and uh, you haven't subscribed, please make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you can be updated for videos. And then also, if you're on Facebook and you like the video, make sure you like and make sure you share so we can get the content out. Now, as we talk about how to read the Bible, um, there are a lot of things uh, to talk about. Um, so today, I want to talk to you about how you can read the Bible uh, with simplicity, no matter where um, you're at in your life, no matter how much you know about the background of the scriptures and those kind of things, but you can actually let God speak to you. And I believe that God wants to speak to you no matter where you're at in your life, if you'll just be willing to get into the scriptures and follow just a couple of these uh, methods that I have for you today. Now, I understand that when you and I think about the Bible, this is what we think about. We think about this large book with uh, 66 books inside of it. There are 39 in what's known, we call the Old Testament. Actually, uh, the writers of the Bible call it the writings or the Hebrew scriptures. Sometimes it's called the prophets and the Psalms, uh, the book of the law. So there's a lot of different phrases, but we call it the Old Testament. And there's 39 books in there. And then there's 27 books in the New Testament, which talk about uh, Jesus's Christ, Jesus Christ and his life and uh, the gospel, the good news of how he came to save us, and then taking that news to all kinds of other churches and talking about things going on. So when you start to think about that, you're going, man, uh, inside of uh, this binding, these uh, inside of these two covers here, this book is a pretty difficult book to understand. And when you sit down to read it, you realize that there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things inside of the book that you don't understand. So, for instance, you look at the book and you say to yourself, man, I don't understand what's going on culturally, what was going on when they were writing these things. I don't understand certain things like who these people are known as the Hittites or where Lebanon is. Um, you might say, um, you know, I don't understand why all these things are like they are. Well, I, we'll talk about those things. In the episodes to come, we're going to try to talk more specifically about those things. And one really great thing is that our church here at Northeast Community, we have decided to uh, present a challenge to all of our people and anybody else who wants to get involved, and that is to read through the books of Joshua in the, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, to read through the book of Joshua and the book of Acts in one year. There are 24 chapters in the book of Acts, or the book of Joshua, and there are 28 chapters in the book of Acts, which gives us 52 chapters, which means if we read one chapter a week, we will have read through the books of Joshua and Acts in one year. Now, we believe, and we're excited to find out what's going to happen, but we believe that if people really read through to saturate and to just meditate on the Word, if they read through those two books in this next year, that God is going to speak to us and he's going to change us and transform our hearts on an individual level. And if he does that on an individual level, then he's going to transform and change our church as a whole. So we're excited to see how that works. So if you decide to take this, this challenge and you decide you're going to get into there, you might get into the book of Joshua and you go, man, there's a lot of things in the book of Joshua I don't understand. Well, that's where uh, Melinda, who does a lot of our social media posts and things of that nature, where she is uh, going over and above and she's posting things like, for instance, like this, where it, you know, she just kind of talks to you about some background stuff in the book of Joshua. She posted this just the other day. Book of Joshua is the sixth book of the, of the Bible, and it belongs to a tradition of Jewish history and law called Deuteronomic. 
Um, so try to say that fast uh, three times, right? And so you're still looking at some of this going, well, I don't quite understand what all of this means. And um, you might say, well, I got into Joshua and I was looking and they're talking about this land of Canaan. And so Melinda put this up just the other day and she showed us a map where today Lebanon, Israel and Jordan occupy the land that was once Canaan. So this area of where Israel is today um, it was also known as Canaan. That was the promised land that God was bringing the people into. So you're looking at like, for instance, you're looking at the cultural things and the geographical things and the history that's going on and things that are going on in these stories. And that's what it is. Every book of the Bible is a story and they, the stories build on one another. And you're saying, I don't know enough about it. And so when I don't know things, I, I don't understand what's going on there. So listen, it's going to take a lifetime for you and I to understand all of the background information. And even then, we still won't understand or know everything about the culture, the geography, and all of that. That's going to take time. And so in the next episodes, coming up episodes, we'll talk about how you can better understand some of those things, what kind of resources you can grab to help you understand and answer some of those questions. But I want to tell you something, and it's this, and I want to show you this today. The scriptures, if you, if you are willing to not let the fact that you don't know everything all right, and use that as an excuse or let that hinder you. If you would just be willing to jump into the scriptures with us and begin to read, and you don't even have to do Joshua and Acts. You can read wherever you want, but if you just be willing to jump in and begin to meditate, which is what we're going to talk about today, you will find that scripture will interpret scripture. Even if you go back to, for instance, uh, to a commentary or you grab a study Bible and you start to look at the notes that are at a, on a study Bible, and I'll talk to you more about these things in episodes to come. But if you were to do that or you go to what Melinda's posting online and you read some of that stuff, if you do that, you will find that the people that put these books together and these resources together, that these are people who over time have put the pieces together from Old Testament to New, Scripture to Scripture, and as they put these pieces together, you will notice that when they explain, say for instance you have a question about who are the Hittites, you will notice that when the commentator explains who the Hittites are, they will take you back to other Scriptures to show you who they are. Which means that if you continue to just meditate, take your time and be patient, that you too will find in the Scriptures themselves, you will find the answers to the majority of your questions. And so what I want to do today is I don't want to get into that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that in the next coming weeks. I Today what I want to do is I want to talk to you about Joshua chapter 1 and I want to help you apply just a simple method, uh, which I think is just a simple method, to let God speak to you personally. Now, as he speaks to you, um, you're, you're going to get some general ideas and thoughts, but I believe that God wants to speak to all of us. It doesn't matter our education level. It doesn't matter um, how much we know about the background of a book, although some of those things are important. It doesn't matter the cultural scene and what's going on in the culture in that day, although that's important. But I believe that God wants to speak to us. I mean, think about this. If you're on a desert island and all of a sudden you come across a book and it just happens to be the Bible, someone left it there, maybe a missionary, and you, that's the only thing you had to do and to go on, and you just began to read. I can tell you that if you began to read that and you were on that deserted island for a year or so, you would begin to put the pieces together, and you would learn so much about God's message throughout the scriptures. So I want to talk to you then real quick today about just a simple method that anyone, and I'm, I'm talking to you, anyone, anyone whose mind is working well right now, or at least somewhat well, I know some of us, our minds aren't as good as we want them to be, our eyes are good, we can read, you know, we can see that kind of stuff, um, so that we're able to read it, anybody who is able to do this can do it, all right, and so I, I want to show you how you can do that, it's really uh, not as hard as you think, and God will speak to you, all right, so Let's just, um, I'm going to move over in just a second to uh, the first chapter of Joshua. We're going to take a look at that. But before we do that, I just want to recap just real quick what we talked about last week. And that is, why should I even be motivated to read the Bible? And if you remember last week, and if you didn't see that, you might want to go back and check out episode 9 last week. But Paul tells Timothy in Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul tells Timothy that, listen, the scriptures are powerful 
to bring someone to salvation. So the scriptures have this message from Genesis to Revelation of how a person can find salvation, listen, specifically in the person of Jesus Christ. And so we talked about that last week. Uh, secondly, the scriptures are a supernatural um, text. They have a supernatural foundation. Paul says that they're God-breathed or they're inspired by God, which means that God, by his spirit, inspired men to write. And when they wrote, they wrote through their personalities and through their experiences. And as God inspired them to write, they were writing the history of God working out his salvation plan with people so that people might know him and come into a relationship with him and find eternal life in him. So we talked about that last week. And then the third thing we talked about was that the scriptures are profitable. And that's really the bottom line for all of us. And that is, what's it gonna, how's it going to benefit me? What's it going to do for me if I read? And we said last week it showed us, Paul showed us that, listen, if you read the scriptures, if you get into the scriptures and you meditate on them, they will profit you in the sense that they will help you to live a really good life, a God-centered life, which is a really good life. So I think it, it stands to reason that if, if the scriptures are going to help us to live a good life, then we should jump in. But again, I just want to, I want to encourage you that when you jump into the scriptures, don't let the fact that you may not know a lot of stuff about it, you, there may be things that you don't understand as you read, don't let that hinder you from saying, well, I just don't understand it, so I'm not going to read. If you will just jump in with us and begin to read, whether it's in Joshua, through Acts this year, or somewhere else, if you'll just jump in and, and use this method that I'm going to show you real quick, I believe that God will speak to you. So let's, uh, let's take a look here at Joshua chapter 1. Now, as we look at Joshua chapter 1, I'm going to show you that God not only wants to speak to you, but if you will do, uh, if you will do what the scriptures tell us to do, and that is to meditate, um, you will find that God is going to speak to you, all right? So just look with me at verse 8 of Joshua chapter 1. Uh, God tells Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Now, the word meditate there, and I totally understand this, in the Hebrew, uh, you say, well, I don't know Hebrew, and we're going to talk about how you might be able to find out uh, what that word meditate is with using some different resources in up upcoming episodes. But you really don't need to, I mean, just think about meditate. You know that meditate means to think or to, to work through. The actual Hebrew there means to chew on, um, but it also um, has this idea. If you look back here, don't let it depart from your mouth. Meditate has this idea that the Hebrew people would um, just quietly and silently recite the word under their breath over and over again while they were on their bed or when they were doing stuff. But listen, it means even more than that if you take a look at this. He says here, meditate on it day and night. And as you do that, to, the idea of meditating here is to ask questions, to think through seriously what is being said from God's mouth. So as God is breathing this to us, what is God really saying here? So then you go back up here and you start to look, and if you start to read in the beginning, now it came after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead now, therefore cross the Jordan, you and all this people of the land. And you begin to read that, and you might say to yourself, wait a minute, I don't even know the story of Moses. I don't know who Moses was. I don't even know who this guy Joshua is. Okay, I get that. And again, it's going to take a lifetime to understand all the different aspects of the scriptures. But what I'm about to show you here, if you will just apply these simple techniques to the scripture text, anyone can hear God speak to them. So you're reading through here, and all of a sudden, as you're reading through here, you didn't read it just on Monday and then leave it go. I want to encourage you that you would do what verse 8 says, and that is that you would meditate on it day and night. So I would encourage you that if you take this challenge with us, that you would read the book of Joshua maybe in the morning or when you get a chance in the afternoon, maybe at a lunch break, and then maybe you would read it before you go to bed at night. And what happens is the more you read it, the more you become familiar with certain things, and you'll start to pick out that the writer is emphasizing certain things. And how they emphasize things is usually it's repeated. So take a look with me real quick. Now, I've color-coded this for us. I don't color code my own Bible only because, well, I don't know about only because, but I don't color code my own Bible because I 
can't keep track of all the different colored markers. I'm lucky if I can keep track of a pen or a pencil. So if you look at my Bible, you will see I have things underlined, I will have things circled, I will have little arrows with notes saying what does this mean or where is there another scripture text. And um, so that's how I look at my Bible. But for our purposes today, I've color coded these things so that we can kind of look and see how the writer has emphasized certain things. So as I'm reading through here, again, I may read through here and look at verse 4. I may see this, uh, all the land of the Hittites, and I'll say to myself, well, who are the Hittites? Well, listen, you'll learn who the Hittites are um, through some of the resources that we'll talk about in some of the other episodes, and over time, you'll start to learn um, who the Hittites are. But again, remember, the more you read the scriptures, you'll start to see the Hittites coming up in other books, and you'll start to find out exactly who the Hittites are. But that, of course, is going to take time. But you don't necessarily need to know who the Hittites are in order to, to, to have God speak to you in Joshua chapter 1. So look with me. As you meditate, as you chew on, as you think through this week, Joshua chapter 1, all of a sudden you start to go, wow, I am giving to them. I have given it to you. To their fa I swore to their fathers to give them down here, which the Lord your God is giving you. God gives you rest and he will give you this land. The Lord gives your brothers rest. He gives you. God is giving them. Look at how many times it talks about the idea that God is giving something to Israel or his people. So as you think about that, now all of a sudden, I what will happen here, as you think about that, you start, I, I believe that God starts to speak to us. And so um, what will happen here is that um, as God begins to speak to you, then you begin to ask God to show you exactly what that means. And so I want to tell you this, that when you first get into the scriptures, one of the first things that you should do is that you should pray and ask God to help you to understand it. And it could be something as simple as that. You just say, you sit down to your scripture text, you open it up and you say, God, would you give me understanding? By your spirit, would you help me to understand? That's the first thing that any of us should do when we get into scriptures. And then as you're reading through it, day after day, and you're thinking through it, you're meditating on it, then pretty soon, all of a sudden, you start to pick up these points like this. God gives, God gives. And then you say, well, God, what are you giving? Why are you giving? All this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, you might start get the picture, get the picture in your mind that, well, God must really enjoy giving things to his people. And so now, all of a sudden, God is beginning to reveal himself, his character, and who he is. And listen, this is how Scripture interprets Scripture. Think about this with me. You'll go to other Scripture texts and you'll see how God wants to give salvation, how God longs to give his people certain things. And you'll start to go, wait a minute here. The more you read Scripture, the more you meditate and think through, you start to learn this characteristic of God, that he loves to give his people things. And he loves to give good things to his people. And so I didn't get that because I just read Joshua one time. I got that because I read Joshua and I started asking myself the question, man, he's, he's always, it, I mean, several times here it talks about him giving it to them. Not, not because they were good enough necessarily, but just because he gave it to them. And then the more I read other scriptures, I started to put this together and I started to see that, wow, God must be a God who really loves to give to his people, good things to his people. And so you can see that God will begin to speak to you even if you don't have all of the background information, even if you don't know who the Hittites are right now. Now, I want, you, I want to show you something else real quick. There, it's only, it only happens one time here. It's not repeated, but it's in verse 5. And God says this to Joshua, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I have been with Moses. I will be with you, and I will not fail you or forsake you. Now I want to show you again. So again, you've entered the scriptures here. Now it's uh, Wednesday and you've decided, okay, I'm going to read Joshua today again. And you read through Joshua and you're reading through that. And all of a sudden, this stands out to you. I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. You've prayed. You've said, God, give me understanding. All of a sudden, that verse, that part of that verse stands out to you. So here's what then you begin to think about. Maybe as you're chewing on this, you may personally say, I don't feel like God's with me. Or you may 
say, God, I feel like you failed me or you've forsaken me so much in my life. You see, that's okay. It's okay to ask questions. And that's part of meditating. That's part of chewing on. The more you chew on the scriptures, the more questions you have. And then what you do is you take those questions and you talk to God about those questions. And as you chew on and you meditate, God will begin to show you through his word about all these questions that you have. So for instance, let me just walk through this with you. Again, going back to the fact that even if you have a good commentary, scripture will always answer the majority of the time scripture will always interpret scripture and will the majority of the times the scriptures will answer your questions for you so for instance i will be with you i will not fail you or forsake you and you come into this passage and you say man god i feel like you have forsaken me a lot in my life and i feel like you've never been with me and so you think to yourself, wow, that's probably a horrible thing to say. I probably shouldn't even say that. I don't know. Maybe you would write it. Maybe you would put a little note in your Bible and put the date by it. God, I just feel like you're not with me and I feel like you've forsaken me. But then what happens is the more you meditate and you think about that and you talk to God about that, then God begins to show you in other scripture texts where other people felt that way. So maybe you shouldn't be so hard on yourself that you feel this way. Because you'll find out in the Gospels that Jesus felt that way when he was dying on the cross. Matter of fact, again, Scripture interprets Scripture. When you begin to read different, different books of the Bible, you begin to put some of these things together. I will even be um, so brave to say that God wants to speak to you more than he wants to give you information about the Hittites. Although the information about the Hittites are good, God wants to speak to you in the depths of your soul about who he is and the truth of who he is and his salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. He wants to speak to you more about those things than he does about you understanding the land of Israel. Although those are important things and we'll talk about how you can figure those out. So all of a sudden now you're going through here and you see in the Gospels that Jesus is on the cross and he feels forsaken. Matter of fact, he quotes something from an Old Testament passage. It's Psalm 22. And he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So now God is speaking and he says, listen, even, even when I was on the cross, even when I had flesh on and I was taking the sins of the world, I felt like I was forsaken. But then you go back and you read Psalm 22 and you read that whole psalm. And then you go back and you look at the end of the gospel messages after Christ died on the cross. And you see that God never failed him and never forsook him and was always with him. Matter of fact, Psalm chapter 22 tells you at the end that David was in such a place that it it only felt like he was forsaken. But then at the end of the psalm, he says, but you were always with me. You never forsook me. So Jesus is the same way. Jesus is on the cross and he's, he feels forsaken. But in the end, Jesus, three days later, he rises from the dead. And we know the story in the Gospels that then he was lifted up and exalted to all authority and was given all authority in heaven and on earth. You say, well, Brian, see, you know all that stuff. The only reason I know that is because I've meditated in the scriptures. I just keep reading over and over again. So the more you read through the scriptures, listen, you'll find answers to these questions. But maybe, just maybe this week, you'll read through chapter one of Joshua. And as far as you'll get is asking the question, God, why do I always feel like you've forsaken me? And listen, you're just going to have to be patient for a while because God may be working things out in your life and he's going to show you, eventually he's going to show you that he's never forsaken you, that he's always been with you. And maybe you'll start to be more sensitive to that as you meditate and ask him and think about that. Because see, God wants to speak to you. So if you will just be willing, if, if listen, if you will just be willing to enter into the text, don't let the fact that you don't understand everything, don't let that hinder you. If you will just get into the scripture text and begin to read with us in Joshua through Acts or um, in, in another text, where, however you want to do that, if you'll just get in there and then you will first pray and say, God, help me to understand this. And then you get into there and you start to just meditate, soak in it day after day, 
morning after morning, night after night. And then it becomes a part of your mind and a part of your heart. And then you begin to ask questions and you begin to think through. And then you ask God, you know, what does this mean? How does this, how does this work out? How is this, what does this mean for me in my life? See, that's called the, how you apply that part. You're asking God to apply it. You're asking God to show you. So you're meditating on the text and you're just soaking in it and learning things about it and seeing things that are being repeated over and over again and seeing things that stand out to you. And when things stand out to you, I want you to trust that that's the Spirit of God speaking to you. He's causing them to stand out to you. So then they stand out to you and you say, now once they've stood out to you, you go, God, what does this mean? How does this all work? And then God begins to speak to you and it takes time, it takes patience but he will speak to you if you'll just get into the word and start meditating on it day and night. I want to show you one more quick thing, and that is this. Look here. It says in verses 6, 7, 9, and then even down here in verse 18, be strong and courageous. And so, to be honest, I don't know that any of us know truly what it means to be strong and courageous. We know what it means in the world's eye, but in God's eye, what does it really mean to be strong and courageous? Well, in the midst of being strong and courageous, you look here and you see this, this, these other phrases, these other, um, uh, these other, well, they're not commands. Well, they are commanded, um, but they're these um, thoughts that God is putting into Joshua's mind to tell him what he's to do. And look at verse 7. He says, be careful to listen to me. Be careful to follow my ways. Down here he says, if you do that, you'll you'll have success. Then in verse 8, he says, the book of the law, which we looked at already, should meditate. You should meditate on it day and night. It should not depart from your mouth and you should meditate. Why? So that you may be careful. There's that idea of being careful again. Again, things are repeated. You start to see this. After you've read it a few times, you start to see this. Be careful to do according to all that is written, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have success. So as I look at that over time and I'm thinking through that, I get the idea that God is saying, if you will listen to me and you will live life the way I have instructed you to live life, you will live a good life. It takes us right back to 2 Timothy where Paul said, listen, these things are profitable for you. Why are they profitable? Because if you learn to live the way God has told you to live, if you look to him for your strength and your courage to live this way, even in the midst of hard times, you will live a good life. And you can be sure of that because God has promised it here. And so, uh, you know, this is, probably won't come up just automatically. You won't just catch this the first time you read it. But the more you go through this, the more you'll start to see, man, if I would just start to be careful to listen to God's ways and I would start to, you know, look to God and ask him to help me to live the way he wants me to live, my life would be a lot better. My, my life would, I would actually start to live what the Bible calls a good life, or I would live a life well lived. And so, listen, this is, this is just a simple method that anyone can use, no matter what their education is, no matter how much they know about the Bible itself as a whole. If you just sit down and you open up the scriptures and you first decide, hey, God, I need to pray first. God, would you give me understanding because I want to understand this. And then you just begin to saturate and meditate. Okay, so you don't know who the Hittites are. Put a little note there that says, who are the Hittites? And then keep moving on. But then don't just stop. Don't go on to chapter 2 and just keep reading. Go back to chapter 1. The whole week, right? So you're in chapter 1 and you go back and you read it again tonight. And all of a sudden, man, I see, I'm giving, I'm giving. What does that mean, God? So now, see, you're meditating on it. You're observing it. And now all of a sudden you're saying, God, what does this mean? That's, now you're asking God to apply it. You're asking God to show you what it means. And then God, by his spirit, will begin to show you, hey, I'm a God who loves to give to his people. You'll see that here in Joshua chapter 1, but you'll also see it in Genesis. You'll also see it in Revelation. You'll see it in the Gospels. You'll see it everywhere. I'm a God who loves to give good things to his people. And then you go on and you say, oh, God, you know, I mean, just everything that you, everything that the spirit of God all of a sudden opens your eyes to, you just begin to ask God to show you, whether it's meaning, you know, show me how this applies to my life. God, show me how I can do this. And then God will begin to apply it. And I'm telling you, this is where the Bible becomes alive. 
I, I hate to say this because I think it is really important. I do believe it's important to know all these other things, cultural backgrounds, um, geographical backgrounds, all those kind of things in order to understand some of the things of the Bible. But listen, the thing that God wants you to understand is who he is. If you never learn about the geography of Israel, what's more important is that you learn that God wants to give you salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. What's more important is that as you're going through life that you understand that if you will listen to the way God tells you to live, then you will have a good life. You see, God wants to speak, and that's the message that's coming through the scriptures, chapter after chapter, book after book. And if you will just be willing to say, okay, I'm not going to worry about all this other stuff and understanding everything right now, it'll come. But I just want God to speak to me. And if you be willing to jump into the scriptures and you pray and ask God to give you understanding, listen, he will speak to you. But don't just run, don't rush through it. Meditate, chew on it. That's what we've been told. You meditate on it day and night. Don't read it like any other book. And God will speak to you. Listen, upcoming episodes, we're going to talk about some of those other things. We're going to try and help you find really good resources if that's what you want. But listen, I want to encourage you to use this method because when you use this method, it's just simple. But when you use this method, I believe not only does God want to speak to you through his word, but I believe that he will speak to you through his word. So you have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you back here next time.